Hello, my name is Vic, and today we're going to be reviewing the HP Omen 15 under Linux. In a nutshell, we're going to be answering the question, can the HP Omen run Linux? The short answer is, yes it can. And we're going to look at choosing the right Linux distribution for the job. We're also going to take a look at the compatibility and behavior of the hardware components of the laptop. I've placed timestamps in the video, so please feel free to skip to the sections that are most important to you. Before we officially begin, I want to start off with a disclaimer. Finding a new laptop for Linux is pretty challenging. It requires a bit of research, so before you go out and buy an HP Omen or any other laptop to run Linux, please, please, please do your research. I don't want to be responsible for any damaged hardware, software, or any wasted money. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, let me share a short story. I'm currently living in India, so that means I don't have easy access to Linux laptop vendors like System76 or Tuxedo. This means that I'm also limited to the laptop models available in my region. I noticed that some regions enjoy better specifications and better pricing. With that said, I didn't realize that finding a Linux compatible laptop was going to be this difficult. I think this is important to point out because I feel that the experience of buying a laptop to run Linux really shouldn't be this hard or scary. But the reality is, is that our options are still very limited. In addition to this, there simply isn't enough information out there to give someone confidence that the laptop that you're buying will also run Linux with no hardware issues. I settled with the HP Omen because it had the specifications I was looking for. I also put my faith in a Reddit post that talked about the success of installing Linux on the HP Omen. So I crossed my fingers and bought an HP Omen for the HP website here in India. For my budget, I went with the following specifications. An AMD Ryzen 5 4600H with 6 cores and 12 threads, 16GB of DDR4 memory, 512GB of NVMe storage, an NVIDIA GeForce 1660Ti graphics card, I also went with the most color accurate display available which also comes at a refresh rate of 144Hz. I decided not to go for the top spec model with the Ryzen 4800H and the RTX 2060, mainly because of budget reasons. I also decided not to wait for newer models with updated specs to arrive. I also think that even though the 4600H is slower, I wouldn't really notice it in my everyday use. I also think that the 4600H will also run cooler. This means that the laptop will have a longer lifespan because I plan on having this system for a long time. By the way, shout out to Steven from Own or Disown for demonstrating thermal performance for the 4800H versus the 4600H in a Lenovo Legion 5. There's a link in the description if you want to check this out. So now let's choose our Linux distribution. Based on my research, in order to run hardware released in 2020, we should be looking at the Linux kernel version 5.8. I considered three distributions initially, Pop! OS, which is my favorite distribution, Manjaro, and Ubuntu. Pop! OS version 20.10 comes with Linux kernel version 5.8, so we're covered there. I wanted the smoothest out-of-the-box experience possible. Pop! OS has the NVIDIA drivers baked in, it also has a good utility for switching from integrated graphics, hybrid graphics, and dedicated graphics modes. We'll talk about this later. And in my testing, the live USB detected most of the hardware. I also considered Manjaro, and at version 21, it comes at Linux kernel version 5.10.23. It has a built-in utility to switch the Linux kernel versions and the graphics drivers, although I did not test this. The live USB detected most of the hardware However, I couldn't really figure out how to do the graphics switching. When I went to test some software, namely Shotcut, I found the software to be buggy. I also considered Ubuntu version 20.04 because we can bring the Linux kernel up to version 5.8 with the hardware enablement stack. However, if Pop! OS is going to work for me, I decided that Ubuntu wasn't really worth the effort. In the end, I did not test Ubuntu. Now let's talk about installing Pop! OS 20.10. I recommend doing a dual boot setup with Windows. Keeping Windows will allow you access to the Omen Control Center. I use the Omen Control Center mainly for changing the keyboard lighting setup and in the event of any available firmware upgrades, these are usually done in Windows. If you haven't done a dual boot setup before, the basics are as follows. Number one, you need to shrink the Windows volume using the Disk and Partition Manager in Windows. 
I'll link in the description an article that goes through this process. Number two, we need to create a live USB image with Pop! OS installed. Also check out the video description for a link on how to do this. Number three, we need to turn off secure boot in the BIOS. We can do this by pressing the F10 key at startup. And finally, we need to boot into the live USB. So in order to do this, we need to be pressing the F9 key when our computer starts up. Installing Pop! OS should be pretty straightforward. I'm not going to go over the step-by-step -step process in this video, but I've given a link in the description if you needed help. Now I will warn you, for a dual boot setup, you'll need to create custom partitions. Make sure that you double check and that you don't overwrite your Windows partition. So it's been about three weeks since I've owned the laptop and everything has worked out of the box with the exception of the speakers. But before we get to the speakers issue, let me just go over the things that have worked fine. Screen display brightness works with no issues. We can adjust the brightness using the keyboard and we can also adjust it using the operating system. Touchpad works fine. The HP Omens touchpad doesn't have physical buttons. Just note that if you're using GNOME, right clicking is done by using two fingers. Volume adjustment works fine using the keyboard and also adjusting from the OS. The keyboard backlight can be switched on and off. Changing colors requires the Omen command center in Windows. This is why I recommend doing a dual boot setup in Windows so that you have this option. Bluetooth works fine, Wi-Fi works, all the USB ports work. I did not get a chance to test the HDMI output, USB-C and the mini display, but I would assume that they're also going to work fine as well. As mentioned in other reviews, there's no charging through the USB port. The NVIDIA 1660 Ti was detected and the drivers were installed automatically. This is one of the reasons why I prefer Pop! OS. We can switch to graphics modes easily using Pop! OS. We have four modes available to us. Integrated graphics, which uses the onboard AMD graphics only. The 1660 Ti remains completely off. This mode is best for keeping the laptop cool and is also the best setting for preserving battery life on the go. NVIDIA Graphics. This uses the dedicated GPU only. This consumes the most power and drains the battery very quickly. This mode should give you the best performance in games and content creation. Hybrid Graphics mode uses both the integrated GPU and the discrete NVIDIA GPU. Applications will use the integrated GPU unless explicitly requested to use the discrete GPU. I spend most of my time in this mode. Switching between the integrated GPU and the dedicated GPU seems to work seamlessly for me without having to do any tinkering. Compute Graphics This mode uses the integrated GPU for all rendering which leaves the GPU available for compute functions. I actually haven't used this setting. Switching graphics modes is easily done from the top right menu. It requires a restart and it does take a bit of time to do its magic. Overall, switching is pretty smooth. The only hiccup I notice is that it reset my keyboard backlight back to the default settings at one point, so I just left the keyboard backlight at the default colors and I haven't noticed any issues since. Suspend and resume functions work for the most part. There have been a couple of times where the system would wake back up to an unresponsive or glitchy state. I notice that this usually happens when I'm in hybrid graphics mode or in the NVIDIA graphics mode. This is easily fixed, however, with a restart to get things back to normal. I didn't notice any issues with suspend and resume while I'm in integrated graphics mode. Let's go back to the speakers issue. The HP Omen comes with Bang & Olufsen speakers. Generally, they sound okay, but they aren't spectacular for laptop speakers, even in Windows. With the fresh install of Pop! OS, I noticed that the speakers sounded muted and dull in comparison to how they sound in Windows. My research showed me that there are long-standing issues with Bang & Olufsen speakers in HP laptops and Linux in general. I don't exactly know what the issue is, but I have a feeling that a bass speaker wasn't being activated properly under Linux. I'm not a speaker expert, so I don't know if this bass speaker even actually exists. I found a fix for an HP X360. The fix is supposed to address a cracking issue and activate the bass speaker. I didn't have a cracking issue, but I tried the fix for activating the bass speaker. There's a link in the description below and in my blog for the fix that I applied. After I did this, it seemed to fix the issue. The speaker sounded a little bit louder, but still a bit weak. 
I can't verify if this really fixed the issue or if I'm just simply hearing things. Now if you don't like tinkering with the system files in the terminal, you can try using pulse effects. My main problem with the speakers is that it just sounded very weak. The volume level is just too low. We can play with different settings using pulse effects to improve the sound quality. When you install the dev version of pulse effects from your package manager, you'll find a bunch of other apps with this LSP icon cluttering your applications menu. You can clean this up by moving them into a folder using the drag and drop feature in GNOME. Setting up pulse effects is totally subjective, but I'll share a few of my settings that help me improve the loudness and the sound quality of my speaker. Another optional fix is to allow the volume to exceed 100%. Your speakers will crack depending on the audio that you're trying to play, but I find that this was very helpful when listening to voiceovers or narration videos on YouTube. Before we look at the thermals, fan noise and battery life, I'll go over some of the performance tweaks I made since they will affect the figures that we will see later. I've left the power profile to the default at balance. I set the NVIDIA PowerMizer settings to prefer maximum performance. This will make a difference especially during gaming. I installed CPU Power GUI which is an application that can help you manually set the frequency scaling profile of your CPU. I've set mine to schedule to. There have been some recent developments with the schedule profile and looks like it will soon replace the on-demand profile as a default state. I normally just leave the profile on schedule, but if I want to make sure that I'm squeezing as much juice as possible, I can easily switch to the performance profile. Sometimes the CPU scaling profile will revert back to on-demand when I restart my computer. So I've included CPU Power GUI in my startup applications. This way I can check and set the profile to whatever I need right from the get-go. Now let's have a look at the thermals and the fan noise. I installed LM sensors and P sensor to help me monitor the temperature. There's a link in the description on how to install LM sensors. Now I don't have a great way to log and monitor the temperatures, so this really won't be as accurate as I would like it to be. We're gonna look at the thermals in three modes hybrid graphics mode, NVIDIA graphics mode, and integrated graphics mode. I also looked at two different workloads. Normal workloads with the schedule CPU profile and gaming with the performance CPU profile. In normal workloads, the CPU and GPU stay around 60 degrees. The system on the other hand stays at around 39 degrees Celsius about 41 degrees on the high and 35 degrees on the low. I'm not exactly sure how system temperature is measured in this case. I don't know if there's a different sensor somewhere on the laptop or if it's an average of something else. During gaming, the CPU can jump from 70 degrees to 90 degrees depending on what kind of workload it's doing. The GPU stays pretty steady at around 70 degrees and the system stays steady at 58 degrees Celsius. In NVIDIA graphics mode, which is the dedicated graphics mode, I seem to be getting better thermal performance during normal workloads. The CPU is between 44 degrees to 55 degrees and the GPU is between 52 to 55 degrees. You'll notice that there's about a 5 degree difference here. The system temperature remains the same. We're looking at around 39 degrees. Gaming in the NVIDIA graphics mode is just about the same in the hybrid graphics mode. You'll see that the CPU hovers between 60 degrees to 90 degrees, the GPU from 55 degrees to 70 degrees, and the system stays around 60 degrees to 62 degrees. So just about the same in hybrid graphics mode. In integrated graphics mode, we have great thermal performance. The CPU is at 44 degrees Celsius. There's no temperature for the GPU because it remains completely off. The system temperature overall is about the same. We get it at 40 degrees Celsius. There's no reason to be doing any gaming in integrated graphics mode. So I don't have any thermal figures for this. The fan performance is pretty good. The fans automatically ramp up during heavier workloads. During gaming, they remain always on. The fan noise can get a bit loud, but I personally haven't found it annoying. The fans do a great job of cooling the system, especially during gaming. The keyboard surface and the bottom stay pretty cool. It doesn't get hot or uncomfortable during normal workloads when I use it on my lap. In comparison, my 2018 MacBook Pro with an i7 can get pretty pretty hot to the state that's uncomfortable to use, even just during normal workloads. Fan noise during normal workloads is pretty good. Normally the fans are either off or they're very very quiet. Let's take a look at the battery life. I purchased a laptop to be desktop replacement, so I'm not demanding or expecting a very long battery life. 
I installed TLP to help with the battery life a bit, but I've not done any comparisons for the battery life with or without TLP installed. In integrated graphics only mode, I was able to squeeze out five and a half to six hours of normal productivity work and a lot of YouTube playback in the background. This is actually quite good considering the specs of the laptop. Setting the frequency scaling to schedule tool and to battery life mode in the power setting should also help you achieve similar results. In hybrid and NVIDIA graphics modes, however, the battery life really drops down significantly. Linux is actually not very good at estimating the battery life. I also didn't really spend the time to measure the battery life in both these modes. But if I were to guess, it would be similar performance as you would find in Windows, which is around the 2.5 to 3 hour mark. Now let's talk about gaming. I've tested two games using Steam. I'm not a big gamer, so I won't be able to provide much information or help in this area. We're going to look at two particular categories, Windows only games and games that have a Linux port. Doom 2016 is a Windows only game. It runs very well under Steam Play with Proton. I'm using one of the older Proton versions and I get a consistent 144 FPS in ultra settings. I feel like this could still be improved with a bit more tinkering. Rise of the Tomb Raider is a game that has a native Linux port. I ran the benchmark under very high preset and got 101 FPS total score. Recording my screen using OBS impacts gaming performance quite a bit. So if you do any streaming, I think you'll have to do a bit of tweaking. I don't do any streaming, so I won't be able to provide any more useful input in this area. So here are my closing thoughts. I'm relieved that the HP Omen works well under Linux. I was seriously about to give up on my search. The laptop performs great and the temperatures remain on the low side. This means that the laptop is very comfortable to work with at a desk or on the go. The Ryzen 4600H processor also performs greatly for me. I have to admit though that I'm not entirely happy with how much I paid for this laptop. Pricing is relatively higher here in India compared to other places. For the same amount of money, I could have had better specifications if I bought the laptop in another region. In hindsight, I think I would have been perfectly happy with a laptop that has a Ryzen 4700U with integrated graphics, as long as it was paired with a color accurate display. With the 1660 Ti, my HP Omen will be good for video projects and some gaming. Overall, as a desktop replacement, and even though by now this laptop has quote unquote older specs, the HP Omen is still serving my needs very well. If ever I find anything else in the future, issues or tips, I'll be sure to share it in another video. Thank you for watching. I hope that this video has helped you in some way. Until next time, I'll see you. Bye bye.